largest and darkest event in human history, an event that may leave 290 million Americans dead in its wake. Once you witness the chilling evidence of the words of our Lord coming true, there is no turning back. It will simply be impossible for you to go about your daily life like you used to before knowing the truth. But take comfort, for it is God's will that you are here now so that you may have the time to prepare and maybe grant you salvation from all the wickedness of our times. And if you're feeling skeptical right now, let me ask you one question. Who would have thought 70 years ago that the Jewish people would have a country to call their own? Only those who read Ezekiel chapter 37. That is what the prophet wrote 2,700 years ago. The hand of the Lord was on me and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Then he said to me, These bones are the people of Israel, my people. I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. Word by word, the prophecy made by Ezekiel came true. In 1947, the nation of Israel was born after the horror of the Holocaust, symbolized by the Valley of Bones. Scattered for more than 2,000 years, the Jewish people come from all over the world into this new state and made it an economic and military power. Yet, it was not whole. Israel needed Jerusalem to become its rightful capital again, and that only happened with the support of President Trump. However, to the north of Israel, other biblical prophecies have come true. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah write about this Syrian civil war. This is what the prophet Isaiah says, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. And these are the words of Jeremiah. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee, and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain have seized her. Surely her young men will fall in the streets. For 5,000 years, the capital city of Syria stood as one of the oldest and most prosperous cities in the world. But the civil war began in 2011 and turned it into a ruin. Not only do the prophets talk about the war, but also the refugee crisis and the deaths of its men fighting for one side or the other. The army of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad has been fighting the rebels backed by the United States, Israel, Turkey, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, and ISIS terrorists. In 2015, Bashar al-Assad was at the brink of total defeat. Yet exactly at that time, another biblical prophecy was fulfilled. Ezekiel 38 tells of Russia coming to the border of Israel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your army. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. One only has to look at the map of the world as it was known at the time of the prophet to understand. To the north of the Caspian Sea, we find the people known as Magog, inhabiting the land known as Rosh. Over time, the ancient name of Rosh became current-day Russia. Twice, Ezekiel says that Magog will bring his armies from the extreme north to the border of Israel. None other than President Ronald Reagan a devout Christian said many times he truly believed Russia to be Magog according to Ezekiel. What about the word Gog? Bible scholars agree that the word Gog is not an actual name but a title. He is the ruler of the land of Magog, like a king or a czar. Ezekiel clearly says that Russia will come to the mountains of Israel in the latter years. This happened in September 2015 and never before. For the first time in history, the Russian army, navy, and air force became involved in a war in the Middle East. According to Ezekiel, Magog's armies has several allies, Persia, Kush, and Gomer and Togarma. 
Iran has been known as Persia for much of its history during the time of the prophets and beyond. Right now, Iranian troops are on the ground in Syria, fighting side by side with the Russians and the forces loyal to the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Put and Kush are the ancient names of Libya and Egypt. Egypt and Libya both suffered civil wars and the new leadership is very friendly to the Russians. But the greatest surprise is the land known to Ezekiel as Gomer and Togarma. The historian Flavius Josephus references Togarma and Gomer as the people that lived on the territory of present-day Turkey. In fact, Turkish history books identify these tribes as living on their land at the time of the prophets. Three years ago, Turkey was a strong NATO ally, but everything changed after the failed coup attempt in 2016. Now, Turkey has become increasingly hostile to NATO and the United States. It forced NATO to remove forces from its bases. It's buying weapons from Russia. It fully condemned the idea of Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel. And in fact, right now, the Turkish army is in Syria, fighting to defeat the enemies of the Syrian dictator. The End Times Alliance, prophesied in the first verses of Ezekiel chapter 38, has already been formed. Never in the history of mankind has there been an alliance between Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Now, one final prophecy needs to be fulfilled before the start of World War III. We saw how Jeremiah predicted the destruction of Damascus in chapter 49, but there is one more thing he wrote about that has not happened yet. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is not an actual person, but a title. Just do one simple search online and you will discover that Ben-Hadad is the ruler of Aram Damascus. While it is clear that Bashar al-Assad is the current ruler of Damascus, Aram is a region in Syria now known as Aleppo. The city of Aleppo was just recently recaptured by the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad with the help of Iran and Russia. And Jeremiah says that soon his palace will be burning. How does this happen? Look no further than the headlines of recent months and you see time and time again Israel calling for the assassination of the Syrian dictator. Isaiah also writes about the end of Syria's dictator. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. This is the spark that ignites World War III. Ezekiel chapter 38 states that two-thirds of Israel will be destroyed in this coming war, and those left in the Holy Lands will face grief and pain and hardship. So what happens to the United States? Will we not help Israel at its darkest hour? To answer this question, we must first find the United States in biblical prophecy.